Hey, Keith, what's up, man? What up, Dave? Glad Dave, right? You. Yep, Dave, Dave, Dave. Glad to have you here. Thanks for being here with us. Hope you could. Uh, we can get into it, man. Um, yeah. So, like, social anxiety, right? It's a very, mm -hmm. very, very real thing. Uh, a lot of people experience it, and not all, they're not even aware they're experiencing it. Yeah. Um, I know you made a recently post on your Instagram saying about it. Mm -hmm. So, can you chat? Like, talk to me about that a little bit. How you feel about that? What made you make the post? Um, I think for for me um, personally, um, when it comes to anxiety, I think what I experience more is just anxiety more than social anxiety. I guess there's a difference, right? If I'm not wrong, um, I experience like anxiety all the time. <laughs> and I, I was experiencing since I was young. I never knew what it was. Mm. You know, when I was when I made that video, I was on set. Okay. I was literally in my trailer, and. I don't know, it's just, you know how you, you have days where something just hits you and it's just on your mind and you want to talk to someone about it? Absolutely. Or even if you don't want to talk to someone about it, it's just on your mind? Mine was this, my, that day for me was just the kind of thing where um, it was just on my heart heavy, like really on my heart. And I was in my trailer and I was, it was on my heart so much that it kind of made me mad and it kind of made me feel like, man, whoever else was going through this, I just want to give them three ways to like try to deal with it, you know? And then that's all, that's where that came from. And I said, you know what, let me turn on this camera and let me just talk to people. And I just wanted to connect with people. I think that's the, I get the best out of social media when I'm able to connect with the individuals who follow me. Um, and I think the three things I gave were, and I still do this, uh, journaling is one. Um, uh, uh, putting away your phone, um, like turn it off your phone, basically, and uh, talking to someone. Try to find someone to talk to and not be afraid to talk to that person. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I really like the turn off your phone kind of yeah. thing. I believe uh, social media in itself or just the access of everything to itself kind of mm -hmm. puts us in a space where anxiety rises oh my a God. lot. And it's just, kinda, it's just one of those things that people don't realize, like it's so active in our lives and it plays a huge role in some of that anxiety. What made you really like to like decide to share your struggles? Like what made you like just go public with just it? Just go public? Um, I think just motivation from seeing other people do it. You know, that's like other people that's in the industry and got like a platform. I think that's always great to see your peers and stuff talk about it and see them be so brave. And when I seen that, I was just like, man, like I have this following. I'm a young African-American man. A lot of African-Americans follow me. A lot of black people follow me. And I was like, this is something that we need to talk about in our community. And I wanted to just, you know, share. And of course, before I did it, I thought to myself like, man, people gonna be like, you know, he's BS or <laughs> just doing this just to just like hop on a wave or something or, or he not really going through that stuff. Look, I mean, he, he been in a, he was in a film. He just worked on a TV show. There's no way he's not dealing with this type of stuff. I thought about stuff like that, but then I was like, you know, just, you know, the thought of someone who's actually going through this needs to hear something like this. And that's more powerful than people that want to hate or whatever and trolls you know that's just part of social media people are gonna have opinions and that's true but yeah. uh, some of the things you even said like are like key stigma triggers it's kind of like that that's mm -hmm. where people put the especially as African Americans and people of color in the space yes like we know straight up like let's just we could just be honest about it it's uh it's not a space that uh, we are comfortable in in that space so uh, sometimes we feel like we're struggling when we're struggling we tend to isolate ourselves yes. men in general oh tend to God. isolate ourselves african-american yeah. men we probably have to isolate ourselves because you know the whole mm -hmm. uh we push through everything yeah. uh, get through it no excuses there's so many of those rules a lot of the times that we live our lives like it's sports 100 <laughs> percent. no real that's so real yeah it's so it's so yeah. crazy so um what would you say to somebody who kind of feels lonely in that space would you reach out would you um or would you, oh, or man. do you keep your distance? What, how, how do you feel about being an African American in that space? The kind of things do we, that we deal with overall and do yeah. you feel like it impacts you a lot? I try to, man, if I see someone that's going through something, you, you could kind of, some people are really good at hiding what they're going through. And especially, you know, African, black people, African American, oh my God, we're like, we could just hide it and not talk about it and keep it in. And I guess for me recently, it's just been the thing where like, I'll just say it. I'm that guy in the group chat that just brings it up. And everybody's like, yo, we were just chilling, talking about food and talking about sports. And I'm just like, hey man, look, if y'all ever need someone to talk to, I'm here. Like, whatever mood is going, I'm gonna change it because I'm just like, hey, if you guys need anyone to talk to, I'm here for you. Uh, you need anyone to vent to, I'll listen. 
um, if you need to write in a journal, I'll like give advice in the ch- in the group chat, and then it's just like, you know, my friends they listen, but sometimes I, sometimes I think they're always like, man, this dude, like, he don't know what he's talking about, but it's all love. Um, I remember just talking about mental health with my brother, and just bringing up, um, he was just having like a revelation, like he was just like, whoa, you know, that's crazy that you say that, bro, because that's how I feel. You know, I was talking to him about anxiety. I was talking to him about crying, you know, how important it is for us to just cry. It's so important. Like, we don't want to cry in front of people. And I understand, especially men, especially black men, men of color, we don't want to cry in front of people. And I was just telling my brother, like, man, you ever need to cry, I'm here. You ever need to vent, I'm here. You need to talk to someone, talk to them. If you need to go to counseling at your college, go to it, (laughs) you know? And uh, that's kind of how I just approach things. My little sister, you know, deals with anxiety a lot and um, talk to her about it. I'm like, yo, sis, I'm here. I think she kind of looks at me like, you know, we never really talked about stuff like that, so it's kind of weird for her to just vent that to me, but I just try to reach out as much as possible. I always think about, like, the stuff that my parents went through in the past to make them not really want to be too open now sometimes. And I always try to, like, it's, it's, it's fascinating to me in a sense, but not in a disrespectful way, to just, like, try to see what people's mental is and just try to figure out what's going on and where does it stem from you know um but yeah <laughs> yeah that's a good that's a good thing to go about it i like how you speak about your siblings because oh, me man. and my brother are really really close and i have siblings and we actually tour together so we're in the band together it's really oh, cool. that's amazing um, yeah. that's cool and it's for him he has anxiety attacks and he calls wow. he, he jumps on the phone and he'll call me and he'll be like hey i'm feeling like this and i've talked him down a lot in certain situations and that's just where it is and it's cool and we kind of support each other in that way we kind of created even with the entire band we kind of created this environment where you speak freely it's open yeah um, that's amazing you can come to each other you can cry to each other whatever it may be whatever you're feeling you, yeah. could, you could express your feelings without feeling like you need to be judged and i think that's something that uh it started out honestly from just growing up in a neighborhood um where you kind of all had each other's backs in a that's lot such of a great ways. safe space. Yeah, like, you don't know how important. Well, you probably do. That's such an important safe space, like to have, you know, brothers, blood or not, to be able to come together, hug it out, talk about it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's amazing. Exactly, because I, I played sports a lot too, so that came. Same. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, like, I can't. It, that kind of came from that space also, where yeah. it was just kind of um, a lot of my uh, teammates became best friends, and yeah. and and it was still like that now to this day. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, creating that space where we all are just free and open yeah. to speak about our emotions because we're free and open to talk about anything yeah. we talk games everything girls whatever it might be but mm-hmm. hey like how are you feeling and we check up on each other that's yeah. one of the things and not check up in a way of where it's like uh hey let's go out it's more like we'll just call to say hey how you feeling today yeah not not what you're doing not what you got going on not did mm-hmm. you write a song or maybe for you like do you like did you get the role nah yeah. How are you actually feeling? feeling today? Yeah. And it's okay because as men, we just don't do that. You know, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, not no, at all. Right. Not at all. So it's like, um, so that works. So I'm glad to see that you, yeah. you're close with your siblings in that kind of way. And you guys oh, yeah. are having those conversations. Those are good conversations. Yeah. And speaking of that kind of stuff, like, how, what, how about acting? What's that like? Like, like, what made you get into that? For? Man, honestly, I was, when I first got out here, I was into like, I was a model. I was signed as a model. Okay. And one of my agents kind of introduced me into acting. And when I got into acting, like I did a lot of studying because I got signed as an actor from being a model. So I kind of felt bad. I was like, <laughs> man, this people who's been acting for years is trying to get signed. And I got signed based off of just my look and my personality. So I felt like it was a responsibility for me to go back and study and um, just educate myself on the craft. And uh, once I did, I fell in love and that was it. And it's so funny, you know, just talking about, you know, emotions and and uh, mental health and self-care and stuff like that is such a great tool for an actor to have a keen understanding of like human behavior. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. that, it, and that's, that's what's been making me become a better actor too. Oh. Because I didn't know a lot of stuff about myself because I keep everything in. I just started like really forcing myself to like cry when I watch movies. Cause I'm the guy that holds it back. That's, that's me too. I know, I'm like, yeah. No crying. Nah, I don't want to cry. And I'm just like, you know, just let it go. Like <laughs> it's okay to cry. So I, it's really helping me as an actor too. It helps me to connect, you know, with whatever character I'm playing. And, and that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And um, you played uh, Trey in Straight Outta Compton, right? Tyree. 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 Sorry. Yeah. My apologies. Tyree in Straight Outta Compton. Um, uh-huh. and how was that like and and i know that uh well i've been told that uh 
you're also related to uh, Rodney King. Yeah. I am. So like you put those <laughs> in a bowl, you connect that with LA, you connect all these things. I know. Like how did that affect you? It's weird. Like um, I grew up on Dr. Dre. I got to play his little brother. Um, Dre said I look like his brother. Said I had the same scar on my forehead like his brother. My middle name is Tyree. His brother's name was Tyree. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. Um, but I booked the role. It was a dream come true. Um, my family grew up on West Coast music, stuff like that, uh, NWA, cool. for sure. And honestly, it was just, like I said, it was a dream come true. To talk to Dre on set was amazing. Um, and then Ronnie King, yeah, that's my grandpa's sister's son. Wow. So, yeah, like one of my first, because rest in peace, Ronnie King. Um, but yeah, that's one of my uh, first cousins. I met him only a couple times, but um, yeah, you know, it's a coincidence that Rodney King is my cousin and I'm playing the little brother of a West Coast hip hop icon, LA icon, Dr. Dre. And that Rodney King beating being so um, important in the film because that was, you know, police brutality was a big thing in Strata Compton. And um, it was about this group fighting against that. You know, and, and more so than just more so than about just gangster rap and, 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 and how they got started. Of course, we got that story. But to be able to see how the Rodney King beating and L.A. riots, you know, affected N.W.A. and, and Rodney King being my cousin. And it was just like all this stuff. It, I, I try not to I always tell myself I don't like to believe in coincidences. I always think that stuff happens for a reason. And just to be a part of that and just to be a part of, you know, L.A. history and the, the tragedies that L.A. been through. And it's always like it resonates with me. And even just as of late, the stuff that L.A. goes through. But um, having that close relationship or the, the being pretty much blood family with Rodney and uh, your connection to L.A., do you feel that that it speaks volumes to like youth in L.A.? And you, do you feel like you speak for that as far as L.A.'s trauma and what it's like to be? in LA and kind of be in that space? Somewhat, you know, I, I always, like I'm a big, I'm from Sacramento, California, so I'm like a big Sacramento rapper, but um, I always feel like LA is also a piece of my heart, you know, it's truly the city of angels. Um, and I do feel like I do have some type of voice to where I could go talk to the young LA youth in the communities. I, I think about that a lot. I'm like, man, like, I wonder if I could go to like, you know, a school in Compton, Crenshaw, Inglewood, South Central, and speak to the kids and have an impact like somebody that actually grew up in L.A., you know? But I, at the same time, you know, we all West Coast, and I, and I connect with, you know, the, the youth in L.A., the people in L.A., and just the tragedy that's, ha that's happened out here because they affect me as well. What would you say to, to a, a, a young adult, a youth, the, to the youth or a kid that wants to push in that direction, wants to be passionate and be an advocate for something they care about? What would you, what would you let them know? I mean, educate, like educating yourself is important. Knowledge is important. I'm still educating myself. Like that's the thing I wanna, I wanna really be able to be an advocate for, you know, mental health. I really do. And I know that I have to continue to educate myself and I know I have to continue to, um, you know, uh, just do a lot of research and hear people and, and, and hear um, people's stories. And for anybody that wants to get into that, like I think key is just educating yourself and just knowing about everything you can about mental health. And it's become a thing where like, I'm like, man, if I went to college, like I would like major in psychology. Like this stuff <laughs> is like cool. really, it, it really like uh, resonates with me because it's something I've been through my whole life. Whether it's anxiety, I've been through depression, um, just having trouble loving myself because I'm trying to find validation in so many other things and so many other people. <laughs> so I just like, I, I've always had these crazy dreams like of doing certain things. I don't even know if I want to tell it right now because I don't want nobody <laughs> to take my idea. But I always had like this idea, like I want to, I want to like start a self love class in school, grade school. And I want it to be a thing where there's literally classes to teach kids about self love and study certain books and stuff like like that's that's like a dream of mine. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I know I'm gonna do it. But I wanna like I want I want literally to be in a library to have sections where it's literally focused on self love, and I think that's so important for kids. And I think um, I wish I would have used my counselor more in high school and stuff like that too. Oh, wow. Like um, I remember going to my counselor like once and I like was bawling crying because I was going through so much at this time and that was the only time I went to him. But I should it should have been a a weekly thing, you know, just to be able to talk to him. And he was a great guy. 
It's crazy. I forget my counselor's name too. That's what sucks. But I remember his face, and I know he's still there. But um, so I, I wish I would have spoke to my counselors too. I oh think my God. Uh, I think I, I use my coaches more for that. I think mm -hmm. I would vent to my coaches a lot more than I would vent to anybody else. Um, counselors just didn't seem at that time didn't seem approachable. Yeah. Um, it, it, when you think about stigma, like going to the counselors, like what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's nah, like that's something that's you real. don't want to deal with when you're in school. It's like yeah. Nah. When I played sports, I was kind of the cool kid. I'm like nah. Yeah. I played football. Well, I was yeah, the same. See, I played basketball, so okay, I was kind of yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I got to kind of keep this swag up. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> like, can't it's, it's such a way. crazy way that we think like that, you know, to be like, man, nah, I can't go talk to you. I can't be in the counselor's office. I'm like, I'm playing sports. So it's like, since I'm playing sports, I'm not a human type of thing. That's how we really think when we're young. Like, we're human. We should be able to multitask, you know. And, it's, and being an athlete is always dope because people – look up to athletes and athletes motivate people so to see some an athlete do that even at a young age is like very moving to even have that awareness to be like you know what i need to go talk to a counselor i need to vent i need to that's true because athletes in general like we uh have a specific voice like even mm -hmm. when you think about like having a platform and using that platform like i know yeah. i know you're really into like muhammad ali like 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 what about him that you feel like you relate to so much. One thing that I really love about Muhammad Ali is how much of a people's champ he was. Like, there's a difference between being a champion and being a people's champion. And you can be both, but in which I think Muhammad Ali was, but I, I, what I really love about Muhammad Ali where I always wanted to be with someone, as big as he was, Muhammad Ali could walk down the street and wouldn't need security. And people would just walk with him or they'll just show him a certain level of respect because of how he carried himself in the public's eye and the stuff he spoke about and how he just carried himself as a man. And I've always looked up to that and I always was like, man, like, that's how I wanna be, you know? Um, but yeah, that, that, the people's champ thing, that always resonates with me. And I think Muhammad Ali was a people's champion. I've always loved Muhammad Ali also. I've yeah. always just, just, just his ability to just be so present in yeah. anything that he's doing, no matter what it is, and mm -hmm. you just kind of feel him, he's a force. And in, and in that force, I always look to that in strength. Like when yeah. you talk about like the athlete and you talk about that, that thing that makes you strong, what mm -hmm. makes you strong, um, the, uh, the, the, the strength he projects, it kind of like rubs off on everybody that's around him. It makes really? you feel comfortable, it makes you feel like you can stand up and uh, be about fight for what you believe in and, and, oh, for and sure. just be there overall. So I yeah. always, I have the same thing. I always loved him yeah. and been in that space. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like, I know for us as a band, like we tour a lot, we're all over the place and mm -hmm. I tend to pick up some habits. I tend to like, uh, one of the biggest things on tour was drinking. You oh know, yeah. That's yeah. like literally one of my, big, my mm -hmm. biggest things. And I saw that you said like, you feel like you use alcohol sometimes just to cope, just to yeah. get through things. Like, uh, what is that? What, what's that like for you? Like, what are you doing to cope now other than that? Yeah, it's like, I talked about it in my, when I was talking about anxiety. Yep. About, like, when I would go to, like, certain industry parties, I would be so scared to deal with being at an industry party. And, like, I could talk to people, but it's just, I feel like when I, as soon as I walk up to the party, I feel like eyes are just like this. And I'm just like, and I'm just kind of like, Oh, like, man, and I'm literally just overthinking everything. I'm like, man, how do I look? And then I start sweating and my armpits start sweating and I'm just like losing it. I'm overthinking everything. And I noticed when I would take a shot or something or I would drink, I would be loose. I'm able to be myself. But as I'm doing that and afterwards, I'm thinking to myself, like, that is not a way to cope. It's not at all. And it's not the best way to cope at all. And realizing that, made me scared because I was like, whoa, I didn't even notice I was drinking before certain industry parties to get loose. I thought I was just doing it, I, like I didn't really connect the fact that it was my anxiety that was making me feel like, okay, I need to take a drink before going out to this party. You know, once I realized that, it made me feel low. And I remember when I was making that video, I didn't even want to put that in the video, but I was just talking and then it just kind of like came out and I was like, well, I don't know if I should have said that, but it was like this kind of thing where it was like, you know, and I needed to say that because it's probably someone out there that's on the verge of, you know, really becoming dependent on alcohol because they can't deal with or whatever demons um, they have. And thing. But I was also young and we was just going out and having fun, but not realizing that the reason why I was doing that was because I was dealing with stuff internal. 
So now that I'm aware of that, it's way easier to go to a party and be like, you know what? I'm not going to drink. I'm going to really just talk to people. I'm going to focus. And if, and if I feel uncomfortable, I'm going to just leave. I don't have to be here. You know, I don't, I don't have to sit here and smooge and talk to people and small talk. You don't have to do that. And sometimes the industry makes it seem like you have to. They call it playing the game. And I'm, a very, I'm very bad at playing the game. <laughs> like, I would just be real. I, I love stuff to feel genuine. I love st stuff. I, when people talk to me, I want them to have a reason why they want to talk to me. You know, I don't want you to talk to me because you feel like that's what you need to do for that moment. If you really want to talk to me, talk to me. If not, silence or just not talking is okay. <laughs> like, it's not disrespectful. And I think now that I'm growing up and understanding that, it's really helping me to like deal with going to certain parties, going to certain events. It don't even have to be an industry party. And um, yeah, and just dealing with it. Oh no, I could relate to that. I oh, understand my that. Just going to industry event. I was at an industry event last night, and oh um, yeah, and Grammy it, weekend. Yeah, yeah, and, and that happens. And mm -hmm. you walk in, and I know that feeling when you talk about where it's <sighs> like all eyes are looking at you. And oh. I'm just like I normally lean into like uh, my day to day do Trey, and I, I normally lean into him and be like, hey man, I don't know. Or, mm -hmm. but before I was drinking, I was doing the same thing. Okay, yeah. I, I need, let me take this shot to loosen up. Yeah. Let me relax a little bit. I, I uh -huh. would take shots and just, and that would put me into this space of where I feel like I could talk to everybody. I could be around yeah. everybody. I don't feel like all the, I'm, I don't feel judged. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. So I know exactly how you feel in that space. Yeah. Um, I even, after tour, sometimes there's a thing, uh, post tour depression is a thing. And really? Like, yeah, people don't realize that. And wow. I, I didn't know it was a thing. It was just, I would go on tour, come home go on tour, come home, and when, every time I would come home, mm -hmm. i just go through this wave of feeling sad and down about myself. What made and you realize that you were having that, uh, like just feeling it? Drinking. Like, I realized okay. I wasn't in show mode, and I was drinking the same amount that I was drinking while I was on the road. Now mm -hmm. that I'm home, not even doing anything. Like, it'll be a regular day, and I'm drinking. Wow. So um, I just decided, like, hey, I, I, I need to, like, step away from this. I need to not make alcohol a thing mm -hmm. that helps me cope at yeah. all when I'm on the road or off the road. Yeah. I need to just, I, I knew it was bad when I got to that point. Yeah. Um, even with that, I didn't have to seek professional help, mm -hmm. but I, I, I really railed it in for myself and said, you know what, that's not something I'm gonna do. Have you ever felt like you needed to seek for professional help or did you ever feel like, or, or did you ever feel like you wanted to and, and could it because of yeah. stigmas? Uh, that, that's pretty yeah. much what it was, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, um, well, I, I go to therapy now. Oh, so do I, I live I, by it. It's, I, I live and it's die by it. It's <laughs> the best thing ever. Like, and like, I, I really, I look for. I'm going out. It was so crazy. I got therapy today at one. That's fantastic. So, like, I, I really like. I'm like heavy on therapy right now, and that's like, I'm, I tell my friends, I tell my family, and that, I, that, that's the reason why I definitely seek. I wanted to seek professional help, not only um, feeling like I needed to cope certain ways, but just insecurities, self doubt. You know, just putting myself down, not taking, not being easy on myself. Um, goes back to just, you know, self-care, self-love, um, uh, your mental health. All that stuff is just as important as going to the gym, you know? <laughs> like, and that's one that thing that we got to realize. It's like, if I could go to the gym, I, I, you know, I, I should go to therapy as well um, and really just take care of your mental. I feel like it's the thing I recommend to everybody. You know, I don't, I don't know if it works for everybody. I, I, don't, I, I don't, like, everyone's different, but I recommend it to everyone. I feel like anyone should try if they could. Just sit, having someone sit there and talk to you and you be able to talk to them and vent and talk about like your childhood and how that could be affecting you now is such a great tool. Like, Found like certain insecurities too. really come from what I went through as a child and I didn't even realize that. Oh my God, like I highly recommend therapy, especially, man, especially for my people of color. Uh, I, I recommend it to everyone, but for my people of color, please like, like please look into therapy. You know, it's easy for us in our community to be like, well, you know, you like get over it or you'll, you'll be okay. You'll be okay, you'll be you know, good. like or you know, just kind of pushing it to the side and we should take time to really listen and then try to like seek help for even the young ones. Like it's okay for a young kid to have to like to want to go to counseling or, or uh, therapy and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, like no, that. we I think it's very important yeah. nowadays too. We live in a world where we're bombarded with imagery. Oh um, my god and all types of things. So I think that young adults should definitely, children, everyone should be at therapy. I know what it's done for me in the last just year and a half. Oh, like I'm amazing. talking the way it's, it, it, when you said like it opened up things and it showed me like, oh wow, there are things I behave or things that affect me right now that stem from like high school. Like oh my stem goodness. from like 
stem from like grade school, like literally the, the, the little stem. I'm sitting with my therapist and like we we broke down like my first girlfriend and it was just like, yeah. oh man, is that why I feel <laughs> this way about this and yeah. all these things unpacked and it was really really mm -hmm. cool to be in that space. Um, and you, I know you touched on. I know I work out every morning, yeah. 5 a.m. I got my routine mm -hmm. and I love that routine and it's kind of like my regimen for like self care. That's what I think we, we when you talk about self care, and it's one of those things that kind of stem from sports. I like I like collided two worlds where I would always get up for practices and mm -hmm. things like that, and it's like I just continued it. And then so when I started in music again, I would I just keep this routine going. It keeps me yeah. centered and it keeps me knowing that I'm doing something for myself. Like what are the things you do when you're traveling? What's self care for you? Like what are those? What what oh, is, are there any things that you just habitually do? Yeah, I think I don't really do anything specific. I like to bring my journal with me, bring a book. You know, um, I like to try to wake up in the morning, uh, get breakfast as much as I could. I'm not, I'm not really a breakfast guy anymore. <laughs> I kind of like can't eat till like 11, and but I'm up at like seven. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, man, um, I don't really have a, just a, a routine. I know that um, I just like to keep my journal on me because I just like to jot down thoughts and notes. And right now I'm doing a thing where, you know, my therapy is like, give you three, uh, write down three things you're grateful for today. And at the end of the day, write down three things that happened that were amazing. And so I just like, I, I do that. And this is going to definitely be put in my journal. <laughs> one of the great things that happened today. And I was grateful for being here. But I guess that's my routine. My um, Being an actor is, oh my goodness, our schedules are so weird. Because we don't never have a set schedule. It's like you kind of have to make up for a lot of time. And if you're able to kind of like um, create a livelihood through acting and like be able to pay your bills, that's such a blessing because some people have to go to work and then try to live their dreams of becoming an actor. Um, so our schedules are always just all over the place. But um, I try to like, I do a lot of research throughout just the day. So I'm always, if something's on my mind and I feel a certain way or I see a video where someone's talking about a certain thing like how we're talking now, I'll, I'll take that, I'll probably write it in my notes and later just do a lot of research on it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I, yeah. I normally, I'll see something online and I'll email it to myself so I can read it later oh, yeah. when I can really dive into it. Like, what are some of like the resources you use when, you, when you're when you looking for help? Is there anything specific you go to? Um, Is there places like you land on? There's some really good TED Talks. Okay, um, TED Talks are good. TED Talks really are clutch, <laughs> really good podcast. Okay. Um, I, I can't name like one right now just specifically. I just kind of like, put in like mental health or I'd Google these podcasts talking about self-love or something and I'll just listen. And um, yeah, those are like my go-tos. Um, reading a book, I'll read a book over. I'm, I'm like, I read the book, The Mastery of Love okay. um, by the author that did The Four Agreements. Okay. I'm blanking on his name right now, sorry, excuse me. But um, he has a book called The Mastery of Love and I finished that book and I got a bunch of highlighted notes. That's so I'll just go back, go through my notes, and that's then so like cool. put, put my uh, book away and just go just go about my day. That's cool. I do the same thing with yeah. a book. It's funny. My younger brother gave me this book called The Art of Peace. Mm -hmm. And I oh, read it and I got and I highlight things in it also. Just little uh -huh. things that I'll get up and we both do this thing, this regiment where we get up and uh, we get the book and you just open it to whatever page. You don't. Oh, wow. Yeah. And whatever that is, it's kind of like where you should be for the day. Wow. And, that's crazy. And, and it, it always lands on something that miraculously, when really? we talk about coincidences, it lands on something that mat matches what kind of day I'm having. Wow. So that's amazing. It's, yeah. So it's, it's really The really Art cool. of Peace. Yeah. The Art Keep of Peace. I'll mind. give you the author. I'm blanking on that too. But The Art <laughs> yeah. of Peace, that's my. I, I, I love it so much. I have it digitally on my iPad. Like, that's even, amazing. You know where, where I'm at, I see it. It, the go -to. it does everything for me. It's my go to. Absolutely. You clearly have a passion. Um, and, and, and your passion gets pushed through for your career. Where does that come from? Where is that? Just being motivated by people, motivated by people that, people that work hard and just being in love with what I do and just being on set. I, t I tell people um, being on set is literally my escape from reality. It helps mm -hmm. me because I don't have to do other things to escape reality that is going to affect my health in a negative way. Being on set is my escape. And whatever happening in the world when I'm on set does not matter in that moment when they call action and cut. And I think that I, I find a lot of passion mm. in that. I always tell like my girlfriend, like, I can't stand vacations and I can't stand weekends. <laughs> I just love to work. But she's been teaching me like to really appreciate the little things in life and finding the joy in the little things. I seen an interview from J. Cole when he was talking about, man, when I'm not in the studio, I get real down if I'm not making music. So he was like, I have to find time to just be appreciative to take out the trash. You know, and and that's it's about finding that balance. It's like having passion for what you're doing, but also just have passion of just being a human. Like to this morning, I couldn't find a parking spot. And like, I found one. 
Like, that's amazing. <laughs> like, like appreciate it. I just found a parking spot in LA downtown, street parking, just meter. Just like appreciating little things like that and just taking those little W's throughout the day could really boost your morale. And now I'm just trying to find that balance between like having that super, pat, like having all that passion for my career, just have that same passion, just being a human and being a man and just uh, walking this earth. <laughs> yeah. It's like we tend to focus on the really big things and not realize the, yeah. the, the small blessings that's happening mm -hmm. throughout your day or those little things because you're just so used to them. Man. And if you compile all the small good things that you feel yeah. throughout the day, you will turn your whole day will turn around. I always, Literally. You know, and being a, a and being a Buddhist, I've learned about energies and understanding oh, and, and, and mastering those things and understanding yourself and taking understanding that you have so much power and control of how long you stay in suffering or, or mm -hmm. how long you deal with something. It's like, hey, this might be a bad thing for today or this might this bad moment happen now, but don't carry that moment throughout the end of the day. Yeah. Don't let moments become your days. Yes, and, and very important. And, 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 I, yeah. and I completely agree with it. Now, you've, you've come out publicly about your struggles yeah. and you shared these struggles. How do you feel like that helps others because you were able to come out and talk about your struggles publicly yeah. in that kind of way that you were vulnerable. You were yeah. so vulnerable and vulnerability is big. Oh my so God, is, so is there anything you feel like uh, in this moment you could be vulnerable about and that may help someone else? Um, well, it was a time in 2018 where I went through a very, I mean, I don't know how deep it is, it was deep, but a depression. It was like around it was right after BET Awards when I found out that I was dealing with something because I had took a picture with my girlfriend and I've seen, I was seeing comments of people saying that I looked very skinny. Mm. And I've always been the type of guy that's been like a thin, lean guy. So at first I, I like, was like really hurt by it because I'm like, dude, I've always looked like this. I've always been skinny. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? Like, and I'm just reading comments and really getting down on myself, like, why are people saying this about me, saying that I'm on drugs and all this crazy stuff. And um, I realized, you know, after talking to my girlfriend, I think it was a little bit after that, I had just like a breakdown and I was crying. I realized that I was just going through a really deep depression because of my career and because of, I was in a relationship publicly and people speaking on my relationship and having opinions about it, it really hurt me. And I remember I would have mornings where I literally didn't want to get up. Like I literally would sit in the bed and dread the fact that I had to get up for the day. Um, I wasn't hungry. Um, when, I turned, when I turned on my phone and went into my Instagram, I would, my stomach would turn. That was the anxiety now, of just getting on my Instagram, looking at notifications or Twitter, and seeing people say certain things about me. And when I look at those pictures during that time, I see how much weight I lost. I was really going through it. And the only person that knew was my girlfriend. And um, I told people, you know, I told my parents before I've been through it um, and stuff like that. But during that time, I felt so alone, even if I was in a room full of all the people I love. Like it was like, it was, the, it was the craziest feeling. I, have, I had never felt nothing like that before that I could remember. And just, it really opened up, it really opened up my eyes to really, it really just opened up my mind and my heart to really be like, I really want to help other people that go through this. <laughs> like, any way I could. I'm not the smartest dude in the world. You know, I'm not the best speaker. But one way I think I connect with people is just being genuinely me and just talking about what I go through. And I never really publicly told people that I, I, I think I said it one time when I got this award actually um, from my friend who's doing honorees. And I said it, but I, have, I hadn't really talked about it. And it was just, that, that's when I really came up with the idea of, you know what, I'm gonna delete my apps for a couple of weeks. You know what, I'm gonna log out of Instagram. I'm a log out of Twitter because it started becoming a thing where I was getting depressed because I was comparing myself to other people's career. I was mad about what people were saying to me. Oh my goodness. I know that. And I my therapy that. tells me compare and despair. That's our yeah, thing. Yeah, that compare and despair. Thing. So like, like oh. I was going through it and really it was just seeking validation from others before trying to seek it from myself. You know, just really never 
having a moment where I was telling, like, where I actually loved myself, where I actually was, where I actually took the time to really be easy on myself and love myself. And I read this book now called The Untethered Soul um, by Michael A. Singer, I believe, and he talks about um, just being aware of your thoughts. And that was a crazy thing, because when I made that first video, I was talking about these thoughts I was having when I was asleep and these negative thoughts. And they were just killing me. I was thinking about a bunch of stuff and it was making me think so negative and I was so mad. And reading this book, I'm like, man, if I would've read that book at that time, just to, just to see those thoughts, be aware of them and just let them pass by would've helped me so much. And it's hard to get to that point because we're all human and we have to deal, we're still trying to deal with things. But yeah, that, that depression in like 2018, man, that, that really, really, um, that was a lot, man. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really, it wasn't to the point where I just felt like I didn't want to be here anymore at all. It just felt like, I just felt really lonely and I just felt hurt every morning. Like my feelings were just hurt. I was super sensitive about everything too. And after, you know, getting through that, I'm just like, man, I just want to help people that go through it as, as any way that I can, man. And I want people to see me and be like, you know what, man, I've been through that too. And I want to really just, you know, I want help, like, yeah. That's cool, man. And then, and it's so crazy because I relate to the comment section so much. Oh, my um, God. The comment section is the worst place you could possibly ever be in. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a very fun place you could be in because you're just laughing. When it's yeah, yeah. But when it's not, when the, when the comments are about you, oh the comments goodness. change. It, 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 it makes you spiral. And, I, and I've been mm -hmm. through that. Um, so I understand being in a place where you've you, you gone through a depression and, and it comes at weird times. You just said something just now that is like a line that I wrote in a song. Like, because I feel like that, like I, I felt so alone, surrounded by so many. And I say that in a line because I'm in these spaces, I'm surrounded by bands, I'm surrounded by everyone who I love, but they have no clue that I feel low and I feel isolated, I, I don't feel good about myself. Have you ever had a situation where uh, a friend confided in you or you saw something was wrong with a friend mm -hmm. and now you kind of carry this burden? How do you go about that? How would you yeah. a help that friend, but also stay true to the confidence that that friend put in you? Um, I, I've had a time where uh, one of my friends kind of um, hit the group chat up and just saying he was crying. He don't know why he was crying, but as we started breaking it down, he started saying all this stuff. It was such a beautiful moment in our group chat because everyone was kind of giving their experience and kind of being there with our friend. And that was, I could tell that was so effective because I could tell my friend didn't really talk about that at all, ever. So when we all started breaking down what he was going through and giving our suggestions and stuff like that and saying, you know, be here to talk, like, you just, you just felt everyone kind of like um, started looking at each other, not physically because we're in a group chat, but like really just being like, dang, we all go through this and we could, we could talk about this. Um, for me, I think it's like, I see a friend going through something, my first thing is just to be like, you wanna talk about it? Um, you know, how you feeling, you need anything? Uh, but if, 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 if some, if a friend tells me something he's going through, or he confides in me, or she confi confides in me and doesn't want me to tell anyone, it's, 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 like, it's like a big responsibility, but I'm the type of person that's like, hey, I'll give, you know, I'll give a suggestion about maybe like going to therapy or I'll just, you know, pick their brain and be like, well, how are you feeling? Why do you think you're feeling like this? I, I don't try to play therapist all the time. I'm not, I'm not a licensed therapist, but I, I am a friend, you know, and it's like, you know, just the little things saying, you know, I'll come over there, just kick it with you, go watch, you know, the game and just talk about it. Like that type of stuff, man, because it's those little things that really help. Like when you could just be a friend that someone could call on, oh my goodness, it's the, it's the most... It's, it's just the most fulfilling thing ever, but at the same time, it helps you. Because then you'll find yourself talking about things that you didn't really want to talk about. You know, I've, I've had my brother ask me things about certain situations and how he felt, and I gave my advice, and then I look at myself giving that advice and being like, man, I came a long way from how I was or how I felt about that. And it's just, it's, it's one of the best feelings ever. It's, I mean, and it all comes back to like, man, the most important thing that we've been put on this earth to do is love each other. And that's, that's why I admire dogs so much, more than I did when I was young. Cause I got bit by a dog, so I had like this thing where I'm like, I'm so scared of dogs. I, I love dogs again. <laughs> and uh, 
I just, what I love about dogs, man, all they want is just love. That's they don't it. care what you're going through. <laughs> they don't care like how much money you got, how you look, how you dress, what's your race, what's your beliefs. When they when you come through the door, you hear them crying, they jumping at you, they just want love. And I think that um, that's the first step of helping a friend is just to show compassion and just have love. Even if you're not used to talking about it, try to find it in yourself to do so because it can help you. It could really be a tool to help yourself and really be a tool to be like, you know what? I don't even know how I just talked to my friend about that because I can't talk about that. But now I could feel like I could talk to a friend about that because I was able to talk to that friend about that. If that makes any sense, I talk in like crazy circles. But um, yeah, I just think it's all about just being there, being present and listening, being an active listener. It's easy to be like, okay, I'll hear you talk. And then when they start talking, you start checking your phone a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's, that's the response when you're really not listening. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> nah, like really like that's put so your true. phone, put your phone away and really just active listen. And just, just be present, be in the moment and really hear what they're saying and, and, you know, try to give the best feedback you can without, you know, without making them feel like they would never tell you something again. Don't judge anybody when they're talking to you. Please don't judge them, just hear them out. And um, you know, if you feel you need to seek professional help for that person because they said something that's very alarming or about harming yourself or something crazy, then you should. You should go to somebody professional. Don't go to your friend or your, don't go call your mom and be like, yo mom, look what, guess what uh, such and such said about, go to, go to try to seek professional help for them. I think that'll really show somebody like that you really care even if they're so against you seeking that help. That's, that's really cool, see, because even in that um, in that space, I dealt with that because the group text is so big. Like the group text is a thing amongst the group men. Chat the is group, really a people thing. don't realize the group chat. It means a lot. If you read some group threads, you'll get to know a lot about guys and their mm-hmm. and their and their bonds. Yeah. And I remember just I, it was a summer. I was just really really struggling, and, and I was in a space of great things going on, but mm-hmm. none of it was helping me feel validated within myself. Man. So I woke up that night and I was just, it was, and, and I couldn't sleep. And then I thought I was just gonna go through my routine and get up and be like, let me go work out. But that didn't work. And I found myself crying. I found myself yeah. sitting in front of my bed crying and not knowing why, but feeling really low. But in that moment when you're crying, do you ever feel like Oh my God, I'm feeling sorry for myself. I'm being like a drama king, yes. queen. You know what I'm? Do you ever feel like that? Sometimes. And you yeah. kind of like have to really check yourself and be easy on yourself. Like, wait, no. Because you beat yourself I, up. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. You beat, and I'm beating myself up in this yeah. space. And I just said, you know what? I'm gonna just throw it in the group text because I, mm-hmm. I didn't want to throw it in the group text, which is funny because I'm yeah. like, I tell these dudes that I'm, I'm over here crying on the floor, mm-hmm. and I threw it in the group text and. It was amazing. I, it was one of the things that I felt like I should have done a long time, and it really showed me that how where my support system laid yeah. and how great it was. Within minutes, people were calling. Uh, yeah. Guys came to my house, got me out of the apartment. We went play basketball. Yeah. We did everything to get my mind off of it, and it helped yeah. me feel better about it, and it helped me validate. And at the time, needed to just be like, okay, my anxiety is bad and I seek professional help at that point. And I really and I, and I really thank all of my friends and everybody, even he's here now, even Trey who's here now with me right now, he, uh, he he's not only a business partner, but he's like one of my best friends. Like, it's amazing. He, he's in the group chat. Yeah. And, and so when you talk about that, yeah, it means so much for people to understand that you can be there for your friends mm-hmm. and, and confide in them and, and hold their secrets, but also, hey, Tell them like, hey, guide them through getting professional help. Yeah. Let them know that you'll walk that line with them, that they're not alone. Because yeah. that's one of the biggest things, feeling alone and, and, and being in that space is difficult. So I'm yeah. like so happy you got to share that and let people know, man. Like, yeah. like no matter how high you are in the, in the stratosphere, no matter what you're doing in life, mm-hmm. we it's love. We underestimate our friends too. Yeah, we do. We underestimate the power of what our friends have because men are so weird. Like we'll we'll be friends with each other, but like we don't want to like look each other in the eye too long <laughs> or like get too like intimate and like really vent to our to each other. And then when we do, it's like, dang, bro, like, it's like thank you, man. You, bro. I love you, bro. Like, <laughs> and that's so funny. But I I'm really one thing about this new generation. I'm very impressed by how vocal we are about mental health and speaking to each other and loving each other and loving ourselves and and seeking help i think that's one of the most amazing things to see like man i swear if i just knew this information in high school 
high school would have been so much easier. And high school was fun for me, but it still were moments where I felt like the world was about to end because of just these little things. If I, if I was able to just educate myself on this stuff in that t during that time, I would have owned high school like yeah, all the way. Like, and I want kids to know, like, man, and it's so kids are, I was the kid that didn't get the best grades because I was in class, like my attention span is horrible. <laughs> I like to talk to people, I like to interact with people, but I wasn't a bad kid. I just wasn't good at school. And I want kids to know, like, just because you're not good at like the technicality of school like like math or or english or history doesn't mean you're a bad person and you're not gonna live whatever your dream is in the future like understand like school is amazing and knowledge is power but take care of yourself and be easy on yourself because one thing when i was a kid when my grades weren't good or i felt like they weren't where they were supposed to be i just felt like the worst thing ever. Like, I felt like my parents are gonna disown me and I could be able to talk about my grades to the other parents. And like, I just want kids to know, like, you do not need that to be a validation for who you are as a person internally and externally. Like, you, you don't need that. It's, it's good. Like, I don't, I'm not saying don't, don't pay attention <laughs> to school, but like, just know, like, there's so much more than just schoolwork. Work on yourself as well. Like, work on, you know, just your soul, feed your soul as yeah. much as you feed, you know, your mental and your knowledge and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly, I agree, man, yeah. I agree. I, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what else to say, man. This was a great conversation. Yeah. This was dope. It's I, amazing, I'm glad, man. Like, like I, I feel like I know you. I feel like I'm about to throw you I in know, my right? group chat. We like, just ran into each other coming out the bathroom, <laughs> and now we just like super like, like, like okay, uh, I know you, bro. Like, I, I need to join your group chat. You can join my group chat. chat. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Let's but, yeah. but no, nah, that's amazing, that's man. Cool, I really man. enjoy talking to you. And um, this is always a beautiful thing, especially when um, two men could talk about something like this. Two humans in general, but like, you know, right now it's two men, yeah. two black men. To be able to talk about this is the best thing ever. And, you know, exactly. I hope whoever in the world sees this can really just like, if they were having a bad day, this video could like change their day and they could exactly. find a way to make that call they needed to make. And I feel better. And I feel better. And the week goes by. And I feel better.